Good morning, everyone. I'm struggling to get my paper to stay up. It wants to fall over. Still wants to fall over. All right. Forgive me. It's Labor Day, so I'm laboring with my papers. Uh, good morning. It's Labor Day. It's Monday, and it is the 7th of September. Um, so today I'm going to try to keep this, this message a little short um, because it's Labor Day, and it's supposed to be a day off for everybody. But I don't have the best track record when I say a devotion is going to be short or even a sermon is going to be short. Got a little trouble for that yesterday. My wife pointed out to me, I said I was going to do a short sermon and then it wasn't particularly short. Oh well, I never know what I'm going to say. But with that, let's take a look at, um, we're just going to take a little, little nibbit, two verses today. But there's a lot to talk about in these two verses. Um, so we're in the third chapter um, of of uh, Luke's gospel, and we're going to look at verses 21 and 22. This is Luke's version of the baptism of Jesus, and we'll, we'll look at that, and you'll you'll notice something about it. Um, there's a lot to talk about comparing it to the other to the other uh, uh, two versions in the in the synoptics. Um, synoptics, you know, is is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and of course, synoptic means one vision. But even if it's one vision, there can be some differences in that vision. So with that, let's jump into chapter 3, uh, verses 21 and 22, and we'll talk some more. All right? Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had, excuse me, now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. All right. Um, the first thing we might notice um, is that the that Luke's version is pretty short. Um, now, one of the books I got from my mentor, Jesse, I got a lot of books from Jesse, um, that I re really love, and I have, I've been remiss. I haven't looked at it for a little while. Um, but this is a, a it, it shows the... The three synoptics, and actually in places it even throws in John's gospel. But it lays down the various instances in in the scripture side by side. And I don't know if you can see uh, the differences there. This is Luke, um, this is Mark, and this is Matthew's. That's the, the baptisms scenes. And it's even more obvious what's going on there if you look at it in the NRSV, uh, because in the NRSV... And these are the same size font. There is Matthew's story of the baptism, and it's you know not a long story, but it's fairly you know fairly long. There is Mark's, and it's considerably shorter. And in the NRSV, that very top part there is Luke's version, and it's much shorter. Luke doesn't talk a whole lot about it, which is odd because Luke tends to talk you know flesh things out more. But he doesn't the baptism. Um, and there's some quick differences that you see. There's some, some things you notice very very quickly, too, that are the same. And the main thing, of course, is that he's baptized. And then, of course, at the end, you are my son. God's voice booming down. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The other thing is, is that this is a, an interesting incidence in the scripture in that here we have all three um, parts of the Trinity represented all in one spot at one time. You've got Jesus, of course. He's got to be the one getting baptized. You've got God's voice booming out. And, of course, you have the Spirit descending like a dove. Uh, so all three sides of the Trinity are in this one story at the same time in the same place. That's pretty cool. Not that the God's Spirit isn't always there in the same place, but this is really, I think, the only place that it's like that. Um, I can't honestly top my head on a Monday morning think of any other place where we have all three popping up at the same time. So that's interesting, very interesting. Um, but there's some differences here, and we'll talk about why there, there might be differences and perhaps what Luke's trying to get across to us by those variations. The, the first thing that we want to point out is that in Luke's Gospel, talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. Now, the Greek word that's there um, actually means corporal. And corporal is existing or manifesting itself in a bodily form. It's literally a dove. Okay? 
the others it's like a dove it's the spirits like a dove and so many times we envision this kind of a you know it's 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 a it's a metaphor um so that's different really different um we don't usually think of the spirit holy spirit as having a physical body but in luke's version it's got a corporal body it's it is manifest in physical form um that's really interesting luke drives that point across much the other two don't say it that way it's like a dove it's 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 a metaphoric or uh, interpretation luke doesn't take it that way luke drives that home pretty hard um the next thing that's pretty obvious um in luke's gospel you know what happened in, in uh, verse 20 what we talked about yesterday uh john was put in jail john's not here <laughs> at the baptism of jesus in luke's gospel he's in jail the others are explicit in that john is the one doing the baptizing that's interesting. I'm not sure what to make out of that, or whatever's going on there, um, but that's a difference, and I would be remiss if I didn't show it to you. Um, but the thing that we really want to talk about, the thing that I think is really cool about Luke's gospel, and it is different in this story than than the other two, and, but I think there's a there is a message there in the difference. Okay, um, both Mark and Matthew. The Spirit comes down the moment Jesus comes out of the water. Okay, and that brought up that whole there, there, in in ancient times and for, still today, but in ancient times some were saying that the, the adoptionist theory that Jesus was adopted by God, um, and that that adoption happened when the spirit descended upon him as he came up out of the water. That that that, that was the time that Jesus became divine. Mm, I I don't go for that. I like. I'm, I'm more of a, he was out of the gate um, as soon as he was conceived. Because after all, after all, remember that John the Baptist in the womb jumps when Jesus, in, in Luke's story, jumps when Jesus comes into the room when he's a, still a little bitty fetus in Mary's womb. Uh, so he's already recognized by the, the Holy Spirit residing in, in John as being the Messiah, the divine one. So I don't go along with that idea. So I, I digress. So the, the idea in Matthew and, and Mark is that, that when he comes out of the water, the Spirit descends. That's not what happens in Luke. Luke's is actually really interesting. And again, what's the reason for it? Because in 21, it says, and 21 and 22, we have to read the whole thing. Now, listen carefully. When Pay attention. When does the Spirit come? Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, he's been baptized, he's done with it, and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And then the voice came, you are my spirit, or you are my son, uh, my, the beloved, and with you I'm well pleased. But the important part there is Jesus, Jesus baptized, he's come up out of the water. We've got the, the drama over, the, the showy part is over, right? Um, the, the, the the demonstration of being uh, baptized and he's brought up out of the water and now, and it doesn't even say how long, but he's praying. Jesus is praying. And that's when the heaven was opened and the Spirit came. And that's different. And what does that mean to us? Well, it means that some, you know, I look at that life application, so my wife knows, make sure you tell Gail, I mentioned life application today. Um, a lot of times in ministry, a lot of times in doing mission work, you can have these flashy, fancy things going on and get all the attention, like the baptism. Oh boy! And then and you get this big production. And uh, but oftentimes the 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 important part, the part we need to focus upon, the part where God comes and speaks to us and maybe reveals some things to us. Because remember, prayer doesn't change God. Prayer changes us. Right? All right. Remember that always. Um, I forget that. But here, it's the prayer that brought the Spirit. I think that's really interesting. I think that's really cool. I think that's really meaningful. Um, I think that's very, it's, it's something that we need to remember, that the, that the Spirit came in Luke's Gospel anyway, to, from Jesus sitting down and praying to the Father. And maybe that's what we need to do to strengthen that Spirit, reconnect that Spirit in ourselves. 
So that's where I'm going to leave you at today. Um, I think that's really a good message that Luke gives us. And I think it's a message we, we forget because when we read this, I think all of us are very guilty. When we read Luke's gospel, we just add the rest of that stuff in. We don't even notice that John's not there, do we? We don't even notice that the spirits that the, the spirit comes down in bodily form. It, it doesn't say that we think of it as like a stuff. We read it and we think that. We, so we conflate all three. And There's always a danger in that. Um, not that it's a bad thing, but um, it happened, we, we, I think we mentioned that about in the birth story, that, that we conflate Matthew and Luke and we come up with this birth narrative that doesn't exist in either one of them. Um, and uh, so with that, let's have a very prayerful day. Let's... Uh, Let's end this with a prayer, and then let's go about this this uh, the rest of this day. It's a day for us to take a break, and it's Labor Day where those you know, labor are supposed to take a break and take it easy. Um, I have no idea what we're doing today. Um, Got to go and be told, because I'm on the need to know basis. When I need to know, I'm told. So, but let's close with a prayer, and then I'm going to let y'all go. So. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for those that labor. We thank you for those that do the work that we don't see, that we forget about. Um, and sometimes we forget about the ones that are doing the work of praying. Uh, we have prayer chains and all of that, but we forget about those those souls that are out there that are, um, that are sitting down and, and, and uniting their heart with your spirit. And Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we ask that you make us one of them as well. We pray this to you today in your loving name. Amen. All right, have a wonderful day, and as always, please, please be a blessing to someone today. Talk to you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow we talk about the genealogy. Oh boy, I can't wait. <laughs> See you then.